Welcome back to Harpies in the Trees, where I review horror books with a supernatural focus. Hey guys, how was your weekend and how is your week going? I actually finished a project that I've been wanting to finish for a really long time, and it's my little graveyard terrarium. I was so happy to finish it. And even though I broke the glass top that went <laughs> on it, I decided to keep it in the little container anyway, um, because I don't know, I just kind of liked the size of it and it was just really fun to do and I'm really happy with it. And I hope that they can keep it alive. That would be really nice, you know, keep it alive. Remember to water it. I want to give a message shout out to Regina's Haunted Library. She's having her three year anniversary and uh, she's doing a pretty awesome giveaway. I made a custom bookmark for her and she's going to include one of those in both of um, the packages for the winner. So if you want to enter, go to her channel, check out her video, wish her congratulations. It's an awesome milestone. So today I'm going to be doing a book tag. I was tagged by the paperback junkie for the Friday the 13th franchise tag, which is an original tag created by Paperback Junkie. So this is gonna be a lot of fun, it's totally new, it's a lot of interesting, difficult questions. Um, if you haven't seen the original video for this, definitely check it out, I've linked it down below. The books that they offer in their list are very diverse from a lot of different genres, and also they play off each other so well, and it's so funny, and it's very entertaining, so you should definitely check it out. So there's 13 questions, of course, so let's go ahead and get started. A book where the mother is the villain. This book is True Crime by Samantha Kolsenik. This is about a young girl and her brother who escape an abusive home and go out on the road and try to make it on their own. Of course, they come across a lot of situations that are pretty harrowing and, and just kind of questionable as well. Um, and it's just kind of mainly this story about these two kids kind of surviving through these situations and how they choose to do so. The mother in this story is only in the very beginning of the book. She is extremely abusive. Uh, she is mentally and physically and also sexually abusive to her children. And um, she's definitely, definitely a monster. She's not a villain in the sense that she, you know, she maintains through the whole entire story. And, you know, she is kind of like the adversary for the main character or something. But she's definitely a villain. A book in the backwoods. The Twisted Ones takes place at the main character's grandmother's house, which is in this very small rural town where there's only like one road really. And there's, you know, one neighbor <laughs> for so many miles. Um, and the house itself is surrounded by, you know, the woods. And this house harbors a lot of secrets. And this is kind of what our main character is discovering. A book with a masked character. This is the third book in the Black Winter series. We meet her right away in the very beginning. It is the sister to the main character, Claire, um, and her name is Betsy. And she is wearing a mask that is made specifically to make her invisible to the Hollow Ones. And the Hollow Ones are kind of like these ghouls, some type of creature that is kind of existing in the earth now and who are very attracted to humans for purposes of eating them. <laughs> so she wears this mask and it's very flat and it has no features on it whatsoever, just two holes. And uh, this is kind of how she gets around. A book with the best final chapter. This is a very hard question that I, <laughs> It, I don't really think specifically that this is the best final chapter, but it's one of the ones that stuck out to me the most and I really liked the way that it ended. And it's very visual, it's very cinematic, and it's it's an interesting it's an interesting setup into kind of like what we're looking at. And it's very final. Um, this is Exquisite Corpse by Poppy Z. Bright. It's about a serial killer who comes to the US from the UK and decides to start a new hunting grounds, basically in New Orleans. Uh, it's very good, it's very messed up and dark, so 
a lot of trigger warnings here. <laughs> so here's one of the questions that I don't have a book for actually, and it's a series book that changes its protagonist from the first book. I haven't read a lot of series, to be honest. Um, so I don't really have an answer for this question, but maybe you guys do. So if you have the perfect book for this question, let us know down in the comments. A book was someone or something that has been resurrected from death. And I don't really think I need to tell you too much about Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. This is one of the most classic. <laughs> it's alive! You know, resurrected from death stories. My favorite interpretation of Frankenstein's monster is from Penny Dreadful. I can't remember the actor's name. He, he just did such a lovely performance and he was just so heart achingly vulnerable. And here's the other question that I didn't have a book for, which was a book that has a character with telekinesis. I really couldn't think of anything. I couldn't remember anything. Um, so if you guys know a book for this one, let me know down in the comments. A book that takes place in New York. The Diviners by Liba Bray. This is a great book and it's actually a series and I need to get the rest of them because this was a lot of fun. I don't really read a lot of YA horror. I'm not really into YA that much, but there is a lot of good stuff out there and this is one of them. This is a story about a young girl who, I think she's coming from Connecticut. Um, her parents decide to send her to her uncle in New York in the 1920s to sort of like get her out of getting into so much trouble. She has a very spooky ability of being able to read the future and this gets her into a lot of trouble constantly. She's shipped off to her uncle who actually has a museum of, it's like the museum, the occult museum or something and has all of this stuff in there that's all about the occult and that's all her uncle researches about. So she heads there to New York to spend the summer there with him and she ends up making friends and getting into trouble and, but also um, being a part of something that's really big that's happening in Manhattan. And it's not just the flapper scene and the jazz music and all that kind of stuff. Something supernatural, something horrible is on its way. Um, so it's really, really fun. And the other thing that I really loved about this book, if you love old movies, there is a lot of usage of the vernacular of that time period that is completely adorable. I like you, Henry. I like you too. Are we palskies? You best ski how you feel it. Potted and splificated. Time for night night. Whatever you say, baby vamp. A book that takes place in hell or has something to do with the occult. This is a short story collection called How to Make a Monster by Felix DeMauro. I just reviewed this. So if you want to check it out, I'll put it up here for you. Um, this is super dark, trigger warnings all over the place, just really messed up stuff, but fantastic. There are stories here that do feature elements of hell. Very good too. Like I wish I could tell you all about it, but I can't. A book that takes place in space. Okay, this is Audrey's Door by Sarah Langan. It doesn't take place in space but it has this kind of cosmic element. This is about a woman who comes from a very troubled background. She has a very difficult relationship with her mother. She also has OCD. She's kind of been on her own for a really long time. So she doesn't really know how to, you know, be with other people. She's not very socialized. So it's very hard for her to be in places like, you know, jobs and relationships and stuff like this. She's also an architect and she's a huge fan of this specific type of architecture um, that's from like the late 1890s that's called chaotic naturalism. She stumbles across this opportunity to rent out an apartment in one of the last chaotic naturalist buildings that exist in New York. And it's when she gets to this apartment that she gets this horrible desire <laughs> to build a door. And there, there is something kind of cosmic here, definitely. So I guess there was one more question here that I don't have an answer for. I'm gonna make you guys work again. Um, the question is, 
A book that has characters from different franchises or mashup. I don't have anything like that. A book that is a retelling. So I don't think this is an exact retelling, but Frozen Charlotte is actually an urban legend. So Frozen Charlottes are tiny porcelain dolls that were made in Germany in the mid 1800s or so, and they were meant to float in water if you had them in the bathtub with you, if you were playing with them. When they were manufactured, um, and sent over to the United States for sale. And there was this popular song at the time, and it was called A Corpse Going to a Ball. And it's about how on a frosty night, this young woman named Charlotte refused to wear a blanket over her lap in the carriage going to the dance and she froze to death before she got there. So I don't think this is like an exact retelling. I'm not exactly sure because this is a book I haven't read yet, but I'm so excited to read it. You don't even know. Um, I don't know, but um, it, it's kind of, you know, based off of the Frozen Charlotte thing. So last question, the 13th question, the Friday the 13th question, a book that you found in a thrift or antique shop. Now this is a really fun question for me because I found this here in Berlin. I found it here at a place called Humana, which is just a thrift store and it's like five stories tall and they have like the tiniest little uh, English book section I found. Audrey Rose. This is a 1976 print. Um, it has like a little bit of light embossing, beautiful artwork. It's all intact. It was <laughs> owned by Margaret Stoughton <laughs> before. Um, I was so happy and excited to find this. When I first saw it, I thought, oh, it's gonna be in French or it's gonna be in Italian or something, but it wasn't. Now, I was just so, so stoked. A few people have commented about how they really were spooked by this book when they read it. Um, so I'm really intrigued. Reincarnation, I think, is one of the, one of the really fun tropes that I, I don't think um, gets explored enough, I guess. <laughs> but I think it could be so fun because the creepy factor there can just be so, so, so high. This is a story about a young girl who is not able to control what she's feeling and what she's experiencing in her dreams. She's sort of kind of trapped in some sort of space that nobody can really get to and really understand what's happening to her. Um, but eventually the concept of reincarnation um, comes into play. So that was the Friday the 13th franchise tag created by Paperback Junkie. It was actually a lot of fun and I, I think I'd spent like 45 minutes the other day just going through my library and that's just always like really really fun. Like I always enjoy that kind of stuff. So be sure to let me know what your books were for those three questions that I I didn't have anything for <laughs> and it'll be fun to hear about them because they are so so specific. And if you want to check out any of the full reviews for these books, all of them have full reviews except for three of them, so you can check them out in this playlist. If you liked this video, please like and comment below. I would appreciate that so much. Other than that, please take care of yourselves, look out for each other, and I will talk to you next time.